Hi, I'm Glenn Colbert. This is a short instructional video on how to build a switching box for a PV Viper amplifier. Now, the PV Viper amplifiers are one of the first amplifiers to use modeling. And to do that, PV had to incorporate a computer into the amplifier. Well, computers talk a little bit different than old style vacuum tube electronics. And what they've done is they've built a, uh, a, a lot more intelligent interface that gives us a lot more capability than just turning things on and off. But for most of us old guys, we just want a stomp box that we can click on a button and it turns on an effect, or it turns on the reverb, or it, uh, it changes the amplification. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to make a box that's that simple to operate, a simple little uh, two-button box that plugs into the back of the, beep, uh, the wiper. Because we're dealing with a computer, the switching in is a little bit different than it was in the old classic vacuum tube amplifiers. Before, the switch was just a switch that changed the circuit inside the amplifier when it was turned on and off. Inside the Viper, though, we're going to talk to the computer. What we're going to do is we're going to build a little box that sends simple MIDI commands to the Viper to change the way the Viper sounds while you're playing. Now, PV provides a couple of real nice stomp box for their amplifiers. They do lots of wonderful things. This is a, a Sampra 1. And if you'll notice on it, it's got four switches. Each of the switches has an LED. It's got an LED on the side and a wah pedal. For an older guy, this is a little bit too much to deal with sometimes. And some of us just want a simple stomp box that we can turn an effect on and off with. So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of building something as complex as this, we're going to start out by building a real simple two-button stomp box that everybody's used to with an amplifier got two buttons on it and what we're going to do with the buttons we'll, we'll decide later on. We can do lots of things with them with this approach but the main thing is that we're changing over something simple from something complex. Now one of the things to notice on this uh, Sampra foot pedal box is that there's no place to plug in a battery. It doesn't have a battery holder. Also there's no place in it to plug in an external power supply. And if we look really close on the back, there's just this one plug that goes in that's a strange round MIDI plug. And looking close at it, you'll count uh, the pins on it, you find out that there are eight pins on this MIDI adapter. And typically MIDI only has five. Now the solution that we build will work with a five pin MIDI cable on the first version. What we're going to do is we're just going to take commands from the switch box and we're going to send them to the Viper. This really is a pretty simple project to implement. We'll use a MIDI port just like on the back and our first version we're going to go through and we're going to provide power with a battery to make things a little bit easier and we're going to just build a simple two-button foot switch that can control our Viper. But really listen that the most difficult part of this is drilling the holes in the box to make all the components fit. Wiring up and making the, the computer chip inside it work is the simplest part of it. So for this project we're going to use an Arduino. An Arduino is a commonly available prototyping kit. And it's really a computer on a chip. Inside it has got the computer and all the ports and we can jumper wires over to make it connect to different things the way that we want to. These are commonly used in little robotics experiments and things like that. So we're going to use this larger board and we're going to build up our stomp box with it and we can play with LEDs and we can play with switches and we can play with different things we want the Viper to do. But when we get the finished product down, the end product is going to use one of these little micro Arduinos. And this will fit into any kind of stomp box that you want to put it into. If you want to have just a little single button stomp box, you can do that. Or if you want to build something that's got you know, 25 LEDs on it and 15 switches, you can do that with the same chip as well. Later on we'll get into adding some features to it, but we'll start out really simple with just uh, sending a command to the Viper to turn on and off an effect. So this is our list of uh, materials. We need the Arduino, a case, a couple of switches, a couple of resistors for some uh, voltage control things, an 9 volt battery holder, a prototyping board just to solder things together and keep the wires from being such a mess. A 8-pin uh, DIN socket, you can use a 5-pin DIN socket if that uh, works for you. Uh, for this state, all you need is the 5. And then some assorted nuts and screws in order to hold things together. 
So here we have a block diagram of how things are going to go together. 9 volt battery comes in and provides uh, voltage to the Arduino. After it's regulated on the Arduino, we have a, a, a plus 5 and a minus 5 volt that's kind of on a bus on the back of the breadboard. To that, we connect the, uh, the DIN connector. You can see that we come off of 5 volts through a resistor to the 1 pin, uh, a ground to ground the whole thing, and then the yellow line coming off of here goes to the TX on the Arduino. The switches are both kind of wired the same. One of them goes to the digital one, and the other goes to the digital two output on the Arduino. The uh, voltage comes off of the 5 volt bus, goes through the switch, comes back in, and then goes into digital pin one or two. On the other side of that, we use a resistor in order to keep the, uh, the voltage down so that we get a good zero when the switch is open. That just goes to a, a common ground. So transposing the schematic into the actual breadboard with the Arduino on it, you can see that uh, there's just a standard breadboard that's solderable on the back. The Arduino is plugged into it. On the back, what you can't see is the, uh, that there is a strip that's a, a plus and a minus bus for the 5 volt that a lot of these things connect to. But just a battery connector going into the supply in, the uh, lines going out to the switches, and the lines going out to the DIN connector. So this shows the uh, breadboards inside the case that it's going to go into. A couple of things to notice is that the USB port on the Arduino is facing up to a place where we've cut a hole in the side so we can plug in and reprogram that at will. Uh, also you might notice the other breadboard on the DIN connector. That's for a phase two. After we've got this done I'm going to uh, do some enhancements on it. Also the, uh, the rectangular cut in the top of the stomp box. On the, uh, on the phase two of this we're going to put a, uh, a liquid crystal display in there so that we have a little bit better idea of what the switch, uh, what the stomp box is doing for us. So this is just the uh, components inside the box so you can see how the mounting is and the battery. So assembled, the, uh, the new switch box looks just like this, pretty much like it uh, looked before. Uh, the little stickers there is to cover the hole until we can get around to putting the uh, crystal display up in the front. And a view of it from the end so you can see the, uh, the MIDI connector and the little hole that's cut in there to give me access to connect to the Arduino to reprogram it without having to disassemble everything. So now we've gone through and we've got the hardware all put together and everything's in a case. It's time to put the program inside the Arduino chip to make it talk to our Viper amplifier. To do that we need to have the Arduino development environment. There are a lot of good uh, tutorials on YouTube for how to find and how to install the Arduino uh, development environment. It's really a simple process but it's, uh, it's best explained by a couple of videos that are already out there instead of me trying to duplicate their effort. But once you have the, uh, the Arduino development environment installed on your PC, you'll have a, an icon kind of like this to open up. The, when you select it, opens up an editor. And this is basically kind of a text editor, just like using Word or Notepad or whatever. That knows a little bit about Arduino. So a couple of the first things we want to check out. We want to go into this tools area and make sure that we're talking to the correct type of board and that we're on the right serial port. So if you come down here on the board selection, you'll see that it opens up. And right now we're set to talk to an Arduino Micro indicated by the little uh, button being active on the side. Also on, uh, on this computer that happens to be on COM port 5, so we can see the COM port 5 is selected. So we're ready to talk to our Arduino Micro. The next thing we have to do is open our sketch, and the sketch is kind of like a program. They're saved out in a little area. This is uh, something you can just copy off of my web page to get this program. You don't have to type it in. But this simple pedal code is what we're going to use for the phase 1 version of our Viper stomp box. The program looks a little bit daunting, don't be too, uh, too put off by it. First off, we just got to, we've got to go through and set a couple of variables. So the first thing is that we're going to do is we're going to say which pins on the Arduino we're going to use, and we're going to give them names. So we're going to have a button 1 pin and a button 2 pin, and we're going to tell that the, we're going to use the number 2 and the number 3 pinouts on the Arduino. Also, uh, this is set up so that if you wanted to, you can attach a LED, so a uh, light emitting diode. So if you want to put an LED on pin 4, this uh, will indicate whether the switch is open and closed. And being as all the Arduinos have a 13, I'll use 13 for another LED. There are a couple of things we want to know as the program is running. One of them is what the state of the button is. So we want to keep a, a variable that tells us if button 1 is on or off and button 2 is on or off. And because they're going to change, we need to know what it was before to see if it's changed. So we'll set up a variable that says what it was before for both of the buttons. And just out of uh, making things clean to start up, we'll set these variables to low to start out with. We also need to be able to debounce the switch. Switches actually don't close as fast as computers do, so we'll need to make the switch change a little bit slower inside the computer, so we're going to use some debounce logic. We're going to wait for 50 milliseconds 
before we assume that it switches changed states. The first part of an Arduino program is a setup. The setup portion goes through and it sets the state for everything that's going to run later on. This only executes once and it executes after the Arduino restarts. So uh, each time you power up the Arduino, this, this little section of code is going to go through and make sure that things are set right. So it's going to say that the, uh, the button 1 and button 2 are inputs, so that's where our switch input is going to come from. And we're going to tell it that the two LEDs, the light emitting diodes, are going to be outputs. We're going to go out and we're going to see what the state of the button is. We're going to see if the switch is open or closed. And we're going to set that button state based on what we read the pin to be. Then we're going to go out and read button 2, and we're going to set the state for button 2. Based on what we got back from whether the switch 1 or switch 2 is open, we're either going to turn on or turn off the LED uh, for that. And then we're going to do this serial begin. Now, serial begin is what actually starts the MIDI conversation on the DIN pin outside of the switch pedal to the Viper amplifier. And that tells it the speed that we're going to talk to the amplifier at. And MIDI just happens to be this 31250 serial port speed. If you're using a micro, the command is serial 1. If you're using an Uno, it's just serial. It doesn't have the one there. So now everything's set up. Now the program is just going to go over, and it's going to loop over and over and over and over again. It'll do it a million times. It doesn't matter. So the main loop of this program begins by reading the switch conditions. So it reads switch 1, and it reads switch 2. does this every loop. After it's read the switch position, it looks to see if it has changed from what it was last time by comparing what it read with what the state variable was for both switches. If it has changed, then it waits, it sets a timer in order to, uh, to make sure that the, the state's stable, it's just not going back and forth. If it has been long enough that it's been in that state, then it goes through and it looks at the button state and says at the button state what it used to be for button one. If it has changed, then it changes the state of the LED. So it'll turn the LED on or off depending on what's happened uh, with the, the change in the switch. And it goes over and does the same thing for button 2, looks at it, sees if it's changed, either turns the LED on or off. But after it's checked to see that, you'll notice that it calls this patch 1 or patch 2 in this program. So if the button state stays changed, you know, if it's not equal to what it was before, then it comes through, it sets the LED, and then it calls patch 1. Or if it was already high, then it's what calls patch 2. And the same thing happens on the, uh, on the other button. You know that it doesn't have to be this called a patch, and we'll look at what patch does. It could easily be something different to set the notes on or off. Then it comes back through, makes sure the LED state is set properly, and sets the last button state for the next loop through. So we come through and we look at patch. Patch just writes out MIDI stuff straight to the, vi to the uh, Viper. So it writes out a 0C and then a value, the value that we set up. And that's really all that there is to this. For each of these states, there's four of them for the buttons. There's this one that's calling patch 1, but it could be command 1. Patch 2, and these guys should be opposites of each other. And the same thing on the button, we're calling patch 3 and patch 4. So patch 1 sets the Viper to memory A2. Patch 2 sets it to A3. Patch 3 sets it to A4. Patch 4 sets it to A5. But we could put in any command that we wanted to the Viper here. And that's basically all that this program does. We'll go through and we'll change it to make it do some other things other than select patches, but that's a, a, a part two project item that we get a little bit smarter about the things that we add in there. So that's the main part of the logic. You load this into the, log, into the computer. After you have your program in, it's probably best to click this verify first to make sure that everything is happy. And then to download this into the Arduino itself, you just simply click this button for upload. And that takes the code and it turns it into the Arduino's uh, machine instruction set that it can execute and moves it off of your PC and loads it down into the Arduino so that when the Arduino resets, this is, this is the program that it will be running. And every time the Arduino resets, every time it powers up, this, this, this is the program that it will run.